In America, we stopped wearing suits and ties for men and stopped wearing dresses and just dressing up to go into church. We stopped doing that for the sake of being comfortable. I'm not saying that a person has to wear a suit and tie and a, and a nice dress, our Sunday best. But the motive behind why we don't do it, uh, that's the issue. We want to be comfortable. The pews have to be, matter of fact, we don't even have pews anymore. We've got to have comfortable chairs. The room temperature has to be just right. The lighting and so forth, the sound, all of that has to be at a right level just for our level of comfort before we can even think about worshiping the Lord, before we can take the word of God serious. Being comfortable Christians, that's what we are. Comfortable and having convenience. Rather than having a Bible or carrying around a Bible, we've got Bible apps on our phones. We have Hebrew and Greek at our fingertips, and if we don't know it, there's someone to tell us what it is just by pushing the button. None of those things are necessarily wrong, but what is it doing to us? The problem is we spend a lot of our time listening about faith rather than talking to others about our faith. We'll spend a lot of time fighting over which YouTube Christian is right or wrong, and it might be valid to do so, but we don't spend very much time fighting over our Christianity in public. Now it seems like we're more concerned about who appears to look more godly, who, who can put on a show. We got the dancing pope. Not that he's really the pope, but <laughs> this priest or whoever he is, he's dancing and, and you've got a lady coming, you got someone coming down on a zip line, I guess, pretending to be an angel. By the way, how cool would it have been if the person just would have got stuck there for a second? Just in the middle there, just stuck there. It would have served them right. Hallelujah. You've got sister here who wants to give these fake tongues and then hit, hit every octave that she can. So just kind of show that she's got some vocal range. We got people here who want to pretend as though they're casting out these fake demons and slaying people in the spirit. And then they make themselves out to be something big and bad and something special, something amazing. And they start feeling that way internally. They think they think they really are something. And how dare you say anything against them? Or in this lady's case, how dare you even walk in front of her? In the last three years will mean nothing. Stop walking in front of the prophet. But the question is, how pleased or displeased would God be with all that? We don't get it, do we? We don't we don't see what's happening. Because there are people out there that are literally, literally dying for the faith. We're over here deconstructing our faith where people on, on the other side of the planet, they are dying for their faith. Little girls in Indonesia who have been beheaded for their belief. No, little girls over here spending time practicing on, the, on their next TikTok video. You all do realize that people all over the world are actually literally dying for this faith that we are playing around with. Uh, while we're over here playing fake church, you've got people all over the world who are actually holding real church, a real gathering. Uh, they mean it. Uh, how much do they mean it? Well, they're willing to risk their lives just for the gospel, just to hear it. Us now, nah, I'll hear it later. I, I, I'm, I'm too busy. Have you even considered what's happening in places like China? In the evenings, brothers and sisters in Christ gather together in homes. This is our church.
接，关键来了。这干嘛不行？十号的，还有强子哥的，全强子哥的。公安局可以啊，要请假我就来了。要请假，要请假。我们是在这里，长官不直接。啊，在这里的话，组织参加。你这抢头一块，你们凭什么抢头？现在抢头，如果你们现场执法，坚持坚持。They know what will happen once they're caught. They'll go to jail. And their prisons aren't like our prisons, even though we've got some bad prisons. No, their prisons are much worse. The treatment is much harsher. And they don't care. Places like China, places like North Korea, places like Russia, places, places like Indonesia, Syria, all these different places throughout the world, Africa, Ni certain parts of Nigeria, all throughout the world, People are going to jail. People are being persecuted. People are being killed for it. Having a Bible is dangerous. And so what do they do? Uh, smuggling in Bibles uh, is difficult. And once you get one, the goal is to memorize the Bible as much as possible. Why? One, so that you aren't, so that you aren't caught with the pages. They'll take it, but then also imprison you for it. But then after that, you want to memorize it because what they can't do while they can take the Bible away from you, they can't take away what you've committed to your heart, what you've committed to memory. And then you can turn around and share what you have read, that very same message to others. They are so concerned about having Christ in their heart, about having the word in their heart and then sharing that same word. Uh, it kind of makes us look bad. We're not all that concerned about learning passages, learning scriptures, committing scriptures to memory. We don't we're not really into that. Right. Why would we spend time committing passages for memory when all we've got to do is push the button? Hey, Siri, what does this mean? What scripture is that? When I look at the video of these men being taken away by ISIS to be beheaded for their Christian faith, in my mind, I'm thinking, why didn't they just run? Why didn't they fight? You're not going to take me out on the beach and parade me just to behead me before the world. Then I thought about it. They were they were completely happy to die for their faith just to be martyred before the world. For them, that was an honor. I'm not going to fight about this. I want you to see me willing to die for my faith. Nothing that you can do can scare me. Nothing that you can do can uh, move me. I don't care what you do to me. I'm not going to renounce Christ. I don't care what you do to my family. I am not going to renounce the truth. And that is Jesus Christ who died for my sins. You want to behead me? Hmm. I'll help you out. I'll gladly lay my head down for the gospel. But we don't do that. No. What do you mean? I've, I've got to drive an extra mile to get to church? Church services how long? No. We'd much rather see a show than actually worship God. Father, mercy. Brevida. Bababa, then multiply it and increase it and multiply it. Recall in Leviticus when Nadab and Abihu approached God with this strange fire. Won't get into what the actual strange fire is or the heart and the manner is, but, but I want you to notice something. When they approached God with this unauthorized or strange fire, God responded and he responded with his own fire. He consumed them with fire. So I want you to see what God's message was for us to hear and to glean from, but also to the boy's father, Moses tells Aaron what God says. Then Moses said to Aaron, it is what the Lord spoke saying, by those who come near me, I will be treated as holy. And before the people, I will be honored. Anyone that approaches me, I will be regarded as holy. You, you're going to treat me. I'm not the same as you. I'm different. Do not approach me and treat me like any old cheap thing. Do you know who I am? I am God. And you're going to respect that. If not, I'll make you respect it. And he says, before all people, I will be honored. That same God still exists. That same God, though he has let some things seemingly 
pass by over some time without them being corrected, I can promise you this. I know from when he does come and correct, when he does come and punish, when he does call you to give an account, it's not going to be a pretty picture. And we've been given, we've been afforded all the luxuries, all the uh, amenities. And what do we do with it? The same thing that Adam and Eve did. We decided to disobey. We decided to do things our own way. And so let me ask you guys a question. Of the churches that we see, the churches in China, the churches in Indonesia, the churches in Myanmar, the churches in uh, Sudan, the churches in Korea, North Korea, the churches in Syria, they're still there, the churches in Iran and Iraq, versus the churches here in America, the Western churches. Which one of those churches do you think resembles the real church? And which one of those churches do you think resembles the, the imposter, the fake church? You tell me.